Wonderful. His name should be called Wonderful, uh-huh. Counselor. Uh-huh. The Mighty God. The Mighty God. Look at this. He's going to be called Wonderful Counselor. The Mighty God. Go ahead. The Everlasting Father. Uh-huh. The Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. He is the King of Peace, but he's also called what? The Prince of Peace. And we know that because we know uh, to, we know we know what the book when the book says until a child is born, until a son is given. We know that we talk about Jesus. Keep reading now. Of the increase of his government and uh -huh. peace, there shall be no end. Now you see that? Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Because why? Because he is the God of peace also. Yes, sir. He said, "Of uh, the uh, government and of the end of his, and, uh, of his and, uh, and of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end." Now, when is he gonna do this? Cause I can't wait for this. Well, it's gonna be peace forever. Mm. Everybody understand what you just read? <laughs> he coming to the, he coming to declare first. He gonna declare war on this man. Then he gonna declare peace forever. Yes, sir. Because he is a man of war and he is a man of peace. The Lord of hosts is his name. Keep reading. There shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom uh -huh. to order it and to establish it he with said, judgment. Look at it. Upon the throne of David, he's going to establish it and order this. Go ahead and read. And upon his kingdom to order it uh -huh. and to establish it with judgment and with justice Ooh. from his forth. Even for well, judgment. So when he's gonna pour, pour out judgment, that means he comes to judge this earth. Yes, sir. He's gonna say, Yeah, you've been good, you've been bad, I'm gonna deal with you. And I'm gonna deal with you too. The one that's been good, the one that's been bad. He's gonna deal with everybody. He's gonna judge everybody. Yes, sir. And this God, right? You see any other God said, No, you ain't. Because there ain't no other God. He gonna put set forth, we're gonna show you, he's gonna set forth judgment in the earth. Go ahead and finish that. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Uh, the zeal of who? The Lord of hosts. The Lord, well, who is the Lord of hosts that we've been reading about all the time then? Jesus. Jesus. That's the one we've been reading about. He is the Lord of hosts. He is the God of hosts. <clears throat> That's the one we've been reading about all the time. Let's go now. Let's go to uh let's go to John the 18th chapter, John 18. John 18, and we're going to pick it up at verse 33. John 18 and 33. See, people don't understand it. That Lord of hosts that's in the, other, in the Old Testament, that's Jesus. <laughs> that's, that's the Lord. He is the Prince of Peace. You understand? He is the King of Peace. And he's also a man of war. And I'm going to show you him being a man of war in a minute. So you ain't gonna get no lessons except you get come to a church like this. You ain't gonna get this except you come to a church like this. Well, we gonna teach you the whole the whole Bible. <clears throat> we all you know, cause I got brothers accuse me that I don't teach about Jesus. But who we teach who we teaching about today? None other than the Lord of hosts, which is the King of Peace, which is a man of war, which is who? Jesus. <clears throat> We at uh, John 18, and we're going to pick it up in verse 33. John 18 and 33. Because remember, he said he's going to set judgment in earth, didn't he? Yes, sir. John 18 and 33. Go ahead and read it. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again. Uh-huh. And called Jesus and said unto him, I'm thou the king of the Jews. Uh-huh. Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this things of thyself? Now, Jesus asked him, he said, you saying this of yourself? Or, you know, somebody tell you this. Go ahead and read. Say if thou this thing of thyself. Uh -huh. Or did others tell it thee of he, me? He said, did, that, did you say it of yourself or did somebody tell you it's about me? Go ahead and read. Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Uh-huh. Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. Uh-huh. What hast thou done? Go ahead. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. Go ahead and read. If my kingdom were of this world, uh -huh. then would my servants fight. Ooh. He said, my kingdom was of this world. My servants would fight. And you're going to see. 
that his servants gonna fight when we show you again those two hopes. Go ahead and read. Then would my servants fight that uh -huh. I should not be delivered to the Jews. Go ahead. But now is my kingdom not from hence. He said, my kingdom is not from hence. Go ahead and read. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Uh-huh. Jesus answered. Now look at what Jesus said. You know, you're going to ask why you a king. Look at what Jesus said. Go ahead. Thou said that I am a king. <laughs> you said, he said, you said that I'm a king. <laughs> Go ahead and read. To this end was I born. <clears throat> to this end was I born. Because he is king of kings and lord of lords, isn't he? Yes, sir. And we're going to see this at his return. Go ahead and read. To this end was I born. Uh-huh. And for this cause came I into the world. Go ahead. That I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth, hear my voice. He said, everyone that is of the truth, hear my voice. Can you hear his voice today? Hallelujah. Because we're bringing you the truth of the Lord of hosts. We bring you the truth of this one that's coming to make war. He is the king of peace, but he's still also coming to make war. Let's go look at him. Let's go to Psalm 110. Psalm 110. Psalm 110, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Psalm 110 and 1. Because remember, he come to make judgment, isn't he? Psalm 110, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read it. The Lord said unto my Lord, uh -huh. Sit thou at my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Ooh, the enemies thy footstool. Who is this, who is this enemy? I, got, I, got, I thought God loved everybody. The Lord loved everybody. If he loved everybody, then what he said, look here. The Lord said unto my Lord, that's two Lords there, ain't it? Yes, sir. Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. You mean God got some enemies? Look at what he's going to do to these enemies, though. Keep reading. Verse 2. Uh-huh. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Uh-huh. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. He's going to rule in the midst of his enemies. He's going to rule. Why come nobody tell you this in the churches? He's going to rule in the... Everybody think they're going to get ratchet up and everything's going to be all beautiful and everything. Then he's going to wage war. No. He said he's going to rule in the midst of his enemies. Go ahead and read. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Didn't he tell you that this was my king and my servants would fight? He said thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Go ahead and read. In the beauties of holiness from the womb of uh -huh. the morning. Go ahead. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. Go ahead. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. He will hear sworn and not repent. What did he swear? Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Thou art a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Who, who is this? Go ahead and read. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings the in the Lord day of his wrath. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He gonna strike through kings. And ain't nobody gonna be able to stop him. But you see what he called him though? Mel, thou, thou, uh, uh, and the Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And we see who Melchizedek is in the New Testament day. We're in Hebrew. That's the Lord, ain't eh? Then he said, the Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. Who is this Lord at his right hand? That's, that's Jesus, ain't it? But who is this that's got a right hand for him to sit at? That's the Father, ain't it? Talking about the father don't have no shape or form or nothing. Hi, the book just says, sit in my right hand. He got a hand, so he must have got a body attached to that hand, then, don't he? You think God just a hand? That don't even make sense, do it? He said, the Lord at thy right hand shall strike through king in the day of his wrath. Go ahead and read. He shall judge among the heathen. Oh, he going to judge among the nations? That's what heathen means. He gonna judge him, but we read earlier. He gonna judge, didn't we? Yes, Go ahead and read. He shall fill the places with dead bodies. Ooh, why don't nobody read this? He gonna fill places. With, who gonna do this? The Lord at thy right hand. He gonna strike two kings. He gonna fill places with dead bodies. Jesus gonna do this. Sit. He gonna fill places with dead bodies. Y'all better get him. Y'all better. Ain't no better for the world. Ain't ready for this. You know why? Because they New Testament Christians. And some of them ain't even reading the Bible at all. And some of them got their own religions. 
But well, this is the one you better check out right here, because when he comes, he's going to do damage to the whole world. And ain't going to be nobody to stop him. Buddha, Allah, none of these other gods going to stop him. Teach. Nobody. You can't come and pay a ransom to him, neither. You can't come and pay him to stop him. Uh-uh. So when he comes, it's going to be just like a pit bull. Ain't going to let you go. Worse. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with what? Dead, dead bodies. bodies. And we're going to show you, there's going to be so many dead bodies, we're going to show you what the Lord's going to do with these dead bodies. How are you going to have to get rid of them? It's going to be so many dead bodies. Go ahead and finish that. He shall wound the heads over many countries. He's going to wound the heads over many countries. Over many countries. And, and everybody going to pay. Everybody's going to pay. Let's go now. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, Isaiah 42. This here is a serious God right here. He does not play. All those other gods, you can play to, to pray to them and all that stuff. They ain't going to do nothing. Then the book tell you, look, they other gods, they got other gods, but they, can, they, they don't have no breath in them. This God right here got breath in him. Isaiah 42, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Isaiah 42 and 1. This God got breath in him. He's coming back to do damage. Isaiah 42, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. Behold my servant, uh -huh. whom I uphold, mine elect. In whom my soul delighteth. Uh huh. I have put my spirit upon him. I have put my spirit upon him. Go ahead and read. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Ooh. He said, I put my spirit on him. Who are he talking about? He's talking about the Lord. Amen. He said, He shall bring what? Judgment to the Gentiles. You understand, brother, talking about the Gentiles got the word of God and they were, why are you going to bring judgment on them then? <laughs> why are you going to bring judgment on them? Go ahead and read. He shall, he shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. Now we're going to show you who, is still, who this is talking about. Keep reading. A bruised reed shall he not break. Uh-huh. And a smoking flax shall he not quench. Go ahead. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. But he got to come to do this, don't he? Indeed. That's why I named this the Lord of hosts is Prince of Peace coming to make war. Read that next verse. Verse 4. Uh-huh. He shall not fail nor be discouraged. See, ain't nobody going to, he ain't going to fail. He's not going to be discouraged. You ain't going to be saying, people ain't, ain't going to be able to say, please, Lord, please, and he's going to stop. Uh-uh. Because <laughs> when he come, the whole earth go more. You understand? Saying. But he's not going to stop, though. It's written. Read that verse 4 again. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, uh -huh. till he have set judgment in the earth. Ooh. Until he has set judgment in the earth. Mm -hmm. He coming back to take over this earth. He's going to say, first he's going to beat this man down, set judgment in the earth, and take it over. Who told, anybody told you about this? Somebody need to tell the rest of the religions about this. God right here. They need to tell them about this God. They need to warn them about this God right here. So he's going to set forth judgment in the earth. Finish that. And the owls shall wait for his law. And the owls will wait for who? His law. His law. When he set forth judgment in the earth, the owls will wait for his law. I thought you had to keep the law no more. But when you, when you come back, you're going to have to keep it. You're going to have to keep it then, or you're going to be in trouble. Let's go to Matthew 12. Matthew 12 and see what this is talking about. Matthew 12, we're going to pick up at verse 14. Matthew 12 and 14. Let's see who this is talking about. <clears throat> go ahead and read it. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him. Uh huh. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from this. Uh, see, he know when they're getting ready to do something to him, he just disappear. You know, <laughs> just get out of the way. Hey, well, where you go? Where you go? <laughs> he just, he know what to do too, didn't he? He know how to get out of the way, disappear, so they can't find because it's not my time yet. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But when the Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from this 
and great multitudes followed him. Uh huh. And he healed them all. Go ahead. And charged them that they should not make him known. Uh huh. He and said he charged them that they should not make him known. Go ahead and read. That it may <clears throat> be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Now we jump. Now you say it was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Look at what he's going to say. Go ahead. Behold, my servant. Whom I have chosen. This is what we just read, ain't it? Behold, my servant whom I have chosen. Go ahead and read. My beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. Uh-huh. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. Ooh, now we know what we're talking about that only. He said, uh, uh, Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentile. Uh huh. He shall not strive, nor <coughs> cry. Uh huh. Neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. Go ahead. A bruised reed shall he not break. Uh huh. And smoking flax shall he not quench. Go ahead. Till he send forth judgment unto victory. Till he send forth judgment unto victory. Go ahead and read. And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. Now this one did a lesson. Let's, let's, go, let's go real quick to Malachi, the first chapter. Malachi 1. Well, he said, in his name shall the Gentiles trust. <clears throat> let's pick it up in Malachi 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 11. Malachi 1 and 11. He said, in his name shall the Gentiles trust. Who is this talking about? Malachi 1 and 11. When you get it, go ahead and read it. Malachi, right before uh, Matthew. <coughs> In his name should the Gentile trust. Go ahead and read. What Malachi 1 and 11. Go ahead and read that. For from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. What name is great when it comes to God among the Gentiles? Jesus. Jesus. You ain't going you ain't no, you know, we don't hear Yahshua and all we, you know, nothing, nothing, nothing wrong with that. But this name is great among the Gentiles, though, ain't it? Go ahead and read. And in every place incense shall be offered unto my name, uh -huh. and the pure offering for my name shall be great among the heathen. And the pure offering for the my Lord name shall be what? Great among the heathen, says who? The Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. Who is the Lord of hosts? That's Jesus, ain't it? Yes, sir. But so this name is great among the Gentiles. Just like he told you over in Matthew that his name is going to be great among the Gentiles. Let's go back over to Matthew, the uh, uh, 24th chapter. I'm sorry, I'm uh, sorry, Matthew the 12th chapter. Matthew 12. Matthew 12, and we're going to pick it up, back up at where we left off at. Matthew 12, and uh, pick it up at verse 20. Well, what verse we leave off at? Uh, pick it up at verse 22. Uh, uh, 20, pick it up at verse 20. Pick it up back up in verse 20. Pick it up in verse 20. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A bruised reed shall he not break, in, and smoking flax shall he not quench. Uh-huh. Till he send forth judgment unto victory. Till he, till he send forth judgment unto what? Victory. So he's not going to stop until he get victory. Verse 21, go ahead. And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. And, his, and in his name shall the Gentiles trust. What name do the Gentiles they? They gonna uh, no. What, what name are they gonna call upon? Jesus. Jesus. My name shall be great among the Gentiles. Let's go now. Let's go to uh, 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 Zephaniah the third chapter. Cause this is what when he comes set for prophet. This is why he's coming to do Zephaniah. Zephaniah the uh, third chapter. <clears throat> this is why he's coming to set forth judgment in the earth. Zephaniah three and eight. 3 and 8. Go ahead and read it. Therefore wait ye upon me, said the Lord. Wait upon me, said the Lord. Go ahead. Why? Until the day I rise up to the grave. Uh-huh. For my determination is to gather the nations. My determination is to gather the nations. What other God do you know that deal with the whole earth? And say, look, I'm on my determination to gather the nations. 
What is he going to do? That I may assemble the kingdom uh -huh. to pour upon them my indignation. Oh, uh, he said, I'm going to assemble the kingdom to pour upon them what? My indignation. My indignation. This is why he's coming to set forth judgment in the earth. He's going to gather the nations to pour out his indignation. Uh huh. Even all my fierce anger. See, the Lord is sitting up there. He is mad yes, sir. at this earth. You know, Lord, he loved everybody and all. No, the Lord is sitting up in heaven mad, and he's just waiting to get to this man. He has declared war on this earth, on this man. Simple. I'm going to show it to you. Keep reading. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. He said all the earth is going to be devoured with the fire, with the fire now yes, sir. of my jealousy. With the fire of my jealousy. Let's show you, because he coming, here he come. Let's go now. Let's go to Matthew, the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Isaiah the 42nd chapter. Here he comes, Isaiah 42 and 13. Isaiah 42 and 13. Get ready, because here he comes. Isaiah 42 and 13. 42 and 13. The world ain't ready for this. It ain't ready for this. Everybody think the world is going to go on like it's going on and man is going to continue to rule this earth and the Gentile really think he's going to really continue to rule this earth. Isaiah 42 and 13, here he come. Go ahead and read. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. Uh-huh. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He's going to stir up jealousy. I told you when a man gets jealous, he gets mad, don't he? He said, he goes, the Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. Because God is a man of war, ain't he? Go ahead and read. He shall cry. Uh-huh. Yea, <clears throat> war. He shall prevail against his enemies. He's going to prevail against. He's not going to stop until he gets victory. You understand? Keep reading. I have long time holding my peace. Look at what he said. Look at what he said. Now he said, I have long time holding my peace. Because God, he is the God of peace, the Lord of peace, ain't he? The king of peace. But he said, look, I have long time holding my peace. What is he going to do? I have been still uh -huh. and refrained myself. He said, I have long time holding my peace. I have been still and have been refrained and have refrained myself. In other words, I had to hold myself back. But look at what he's going to do, though. Go ahead and read. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. He said, now I'm going to cry out like a travailing woman. He coming to do damage, ain't he? Yes, sir. You know how a woman, when she's pregnant and she get ready to have that baby? How she cry out? That's how he crying out. This is, this is what he's sitting up, be holding his peace. But he said, you know what? But now I'm going to cry out like a travailing woman. Go ahead and finish that. I will destroy and devour at once. He says, you know what? I'm just going to slap everybody at once. <laughs> I'm going to slap everybody at once. This is how mad he is. This is how mad he is sitting up in heaven mad. He said, I'm going to devour at once. He, I'm going to cry like a travailing woman. Let's go to Matthew 24. He coming. He come. Matthew 24. And we're going to pick it up at verse 29, Matthew 24 and 29. The Lord of hosts is Prince of Peace. He is coming to make war. Yes. And here he comes. Matthew yes. 24, and we're going to pick it up in verse 29. Matthew 24 and 29. When you get it, go ahead and read it. Immediately after the tribulations of those days. See, because he's going to have this man fighting against themselves first. He's going to bring all these nations down into the body of Jehoshaphat and have them fight first. But then here he comes, though. Go ahead and read. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall uh -huh. the sun be darkened. Uh -huh. And the moon shall not give her light. Uh -huh. And the stars shall fall from heaven. He, he really mad, ain't he? He said, now nah, I'm going to cry out like a, a travailing woman. I'm going I'm to devour at once. He said, the stars going to fall. Right? The moon shall not give her light. Go ahead. And the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Uh-huh. And then shall appear the Look sign the of the The powers of, of the heavens going to be shaken. He's going to shake the heavens. Look how mad he is. He gonna, he's so mad he's going to shake the heavens. Now what are he going to do to this earth though? <laughs> what are he what are he going to do? If he's shaking the heavens, what are he going to do to this earth? Look how mad he is. Go ahead and read. And then <clears throat> shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Uh-huh. 
And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Ooh, he said all the tribes of the earth, they're going to be mourning on when they see this. <laughs> and you'll see no other God saying, no, you ain't. You don't see nothing like that, do you? Because he's going to deal with this, this God right here. He's going to deal with the whole earth. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. All of those nations of the earth, they're going to be mourning at this time. But he is not going to stop until he gets victory. So you can mourn all you want to. <clears throat> Go ahead and finish that. All the tribes of the earth mourn, and uh -huh. they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And they're going to see the Son of Man coming, and it was the sign of the Son of Man coming with great power and great glory. And when he coming like this, he's going to do damage. Let's go now. Let's go to Revelation 19 chapter. Revelation 19. He ain't playing. He is a man of war. He is coming to this earth to make war. And everybody, we better get ready. Because it's right around the corner. We're looking at the, most of the signs we're looking at now. Only thing we really wait for is for that temple to be built in Jerusalem. Once that temple has been built in Jerusalem, all hell is going to break loose on this earth. But then here come the Lord, though. Jesus. Here come the Calvary. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Revelation 19 and 11. Revelation 19 and 11. Go ahead and read it. And I saw heaven open, uh -huh. and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Uh -huh. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Now, who are we, we talking about? We already read about him. He said, he said in righteousness he's going to judge and he's going to do what? Make war. He's going to make war. But we, we, we saw earlier, he's going to send forth judgment in all the earth, didn't he? In righteous, he judge, he doth judge and make war. Go ahead and read. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Right, so now we know who this man of war is. Now this God of war, not over. He said his eyes were a flame of fire. Uh huh. And on his head were many crowns. Uh huh. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. So you ain't gonna hear Allah, Jehovah, Yahweh. You understand all these different names that you know men have given him, which you, you don't have no problem with. It. But he said he had a name which no man knew, knew but he himself. You ain't gonna hear all that then. Yahweh, Jesus, uh, Yahweh, you ain't gonna hear none of them names. <laughs> you know, I had a brother just come to me the other day, uh, say his name was Yehoda, something like that, he called him. But you ain't, I said, brother, I read him this right here. You, when he come, you, you, okay, you want to call him that? Just as long as you know that he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is my name forever. But when he returns, though, ain't nobody going to know his name but him. Keep reading. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Now, where's this blood coming from? He was clothed in a vesture dipped with blood. This is man's blood. That's who blood this is, man's blood. Go ahead and read but remember, he's going to fill places with dead bodies, ain't he? Go ahead and read. And his name is called the Word of God. Now we sure don't know what we're talking about now, don't we? He said his name is called the Word of God. Go ahead. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. Now he coming with an army, he coming to do some damage, ain't he? He coming to do some damage. And the armies which followed him came on white horses. What verse you at? 14. Go ahead. Cloth and fine linen, white and clean. Uh -huh. We're going to show you this army which is coming on, uh, on these horses right here. Because remember, we, we saw those chariots surround the mountain. Right before we saw Joseph, uh, Joshua called him, he said, this is the Lord's host. He saw those eggs. He said, this is the Lord's host, didn't he? Go ahead and read. And out of his mouth go up a sharp sword. Uh-huh. And with it, he should smite the nations. And with it. He gonna do what? Smite the nations. Smite the nations. Go ahead and read. And he shall <clears throat> rule them with a rod of iron. Uh huh. And he shall, and he treaded the winepress of the fiercest and wrath of Almighty and God. And he treaded the winepress of the fiercest and, and the wrath of the what? Almighty God. Verse sixteen. And he have on his vesture and on his thigh a name written. Uh huh. King of kings and Lord of lords. Didn't we read earlier that this is the Lord is a, a great king? He is king of kings and Lord of lords. 
And he is the king of the Lord. He is the king of hosts, isn't he? Then, but he's also king of king and lord of lords. Look at him. He's coming. Let's go now. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter. Look at him coming. 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter. Ain't nobody, they don't read you stuff like this in uh, the so-called churches. Why? Because man, when you look at our government, they always try to instill fear in the people to keep them under some type of control, don't they? Keep them scared all the time. Now, why is it that men don't fear God then? They keep, they keep men in fear by the government, keep men in fear, don't they? Well, then why don't people read you this to keep you in fear of God? Why? We look, how he, look how he's coming. We are uh, first, uh, Second Thessalonians, the first chapter, verse 7. Second Thessalonians 1 and 7. Go ahead and read it. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. Uh-huh. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Oh, this is the one that's coming on that, uh, on that white horse with those angels? Jesus? And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. This is that host that we read about earlier. Go ahead and read. Remember what Jacob said? He saw, um, Joshua said he saw this is the Lord's host. Mahaniel, here they are right here. Go ahead and read. Verse 8. Uh-huh. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. Ooh, look how they coming. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. He coming taking vengeance on men, isn't he? Yes, sir. Because he going to set forth judgment in the earth. Read that verse again, verse 8. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. Uh-huh. And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. See? Billions of us, because it's like 7.2 billion people on the earth, right? It's going to be billions of people that are going to be punished. Are you going to be one of them? Or are you going to take into account what we are saying today? Are you going to start... Tuning in and come checking, keeping the, keeping the Sabbath of the Lord. So you won't be one of these ones that's going to be punished. Because he's coming back in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our God, of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is how he coming, in flaming fire. Let's go now. Let's go. Let's go to uh, Psalm 68 chapter, Psalm 68. People better, well, better wake up and to be, uh, 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 be alive, to be aware, to be alive. You better wake up because the Lord, when he comes, he is going to destroy this earth and he's going to destroy this man. Teach. If you ain't on the right side. Psalm 68, and we're going to pick it up at verse 17. Read that verse 17. 68 and 17. Go ahead and read it. The chariots of God are 20,000. The chariots of God are 20,000. That is this host of angels. This is this angels that's coming and with him in flame and fire. Go ahead and read. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. Uh-huh. The Lord is among them. If the Lord is among them. Because isn't he coming in flame and fire with his chariot with these angels? He said, uh, the chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them. Go ahead. As in Sinai, in the holy place. The Lord is among them. Because he's coming in flame and fire, right? To render his anger or punish his man with his angels. He's going to be among them. Let's go to Jude because he's coming with somebody else. Let's go to Jude now. Jude, the uh, 14th verse. Jude right before Revelation. Jude the 14th verse. Because he's coming with somebody else too. Jude 14, and we're going to pick it up at verse, uh, pick it up at verse four, uh, Jude 14. It's only one chapter. Jude 14. Go ahead and read it. And Enoch also, the seven from Adam, prophesied of these saints. Uh-huh. Now look, Enoch prophesied this all the way back in Genesis. Look at what he said. Go ahead. 
And Enoch also, the seventh of Adam, prophesied of this saying. Uh huh. Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. Ooh, he cometh with ten thousands of his saints. But remember, Joshua said, he saw those eight, he said, this is the Lord's host. So therefore, he called that place what? Mahaniel. So now here, this, the, we know that the angels are coming with him, right? Now here is 10,000 of his saints coming with him too. That's the two hosts. This is the two hosts, the angels and the Lord's saints. And remember, he said, look, if this was my kingdom, my servants would fight. Yes, and his servants go fight when he returns. Yes, sir. His servants, not only the angels going to fight, and the Lord going to go forth as a man of war, but his saints are going to fight too. Read that again. 14. Uh-huh. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these saints. Uh-huh. Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints. He's coming with 10,000 of his saints what, to do what? To execute judgment uh -huh. upon all. To execute judgment upon all. Uh huh. And to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, uh -huh. which they have ungodly committed, Go ahead. and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly. which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. He gonna get the ones even murmured against him. Check that out. <laughs> he ain't playing. He gonna get everybody. Hey. You spoke against me, I'm going to get you too. <laughs> Look at him. He coming, he ain't coming. Let's go to Isaiah 66 chapter. Isaiah 66. And we're going to pick up in verse 15. Isaiah 66 and 15. He coming, he ain't coming. Isaiah 66 and 15. Will you get it? Go ahead and read it. Isaiah 66 and 15. Sixty-six and fifteen. <clears throat> Go ahead and read. For behold, the Lord will come with fire with his chariots. Didn't like we just a read that about Jesus coming with, in a flame of fire with his angels? He said, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with chariots like a there go those hosts again. Those chariots that surrounded them during the times of Elisha surrounded the mountains. And he said it would be more with us than it would be with them. The flaming chariots. Here they come again. Go ahead and read. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with chariots like a whirlwind uh -huh. to render his anger with fury uh -huh. and his rebuke with flames of fire. And his rebuke with what? Flames of fire. Go ahead and read. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. He's going to plead with all flesh. Look how he's going to plead. Go ahead. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Yes, sir. Now, we read something like this earlier, didn't we? Let's show you what he's going to do with the, the, uh, uh, the slain of the Lord that's going to be, uh, be many. There, there will be many. First, let's go to Jeremiah, the 25th chapter, and show you this again. Jeremiah 25. He said, and the slain of the Lord shall be many dead. Jeremiah 25, and we're going to pick it up at verse 30. Je Jeremiah 25 and verse 30. Go ahead and read it. Therefore prophesied thou against them all these words. Uh-huh. And say unto them. Go ahead. The Lord shall roar from on high. Because the Lord going to roar from on high. Because he said he going to call out. He going to holler out like a travailing woman did. He said I have long time holding my feet. But now will I cry out like a woman in travail. He said the Lord will utter his voice from heaven. Go ahead. The Lord shall roar from on high uh -huh. and utter his voice from his holy habitation. Go ahead. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. Uh -huh. He shall give a shout as they that tread the grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth. As they that tread the grapes. Because remember we read about that wine press earlier, didn't we? Yes, sir. His vesture was dipped in blood like a wine press, wasn't it? He said, and tread the grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth. Go ahead and read. As noise shall come even to the ends of the earth. Oh, uh, even to the, look, he's doing this, this is a worldwide event that's getting ready to take place. He said, a noise shall come even to the ends of the earth. Go ahead and read. 
For the Lord has a controversy with the nation. Uh-huh. He will plead with all flesh. He's going to plead with all flesh, just like we read over in Jeremiah, didn't we? He's going to plead with all flesh. Go ahead and read. He will give them that are wicked to the sword, uh -huh. said the Lord. Go ahead. Thus said the Lord of hosts, behold. Just said who? The Lord of hosts. Who are we talking about right here? Jesus. Jesus, go ahead and read. Even shall go forth from nation to nation. Uh-huh. And a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. Go ahead. And the slain. Because we read earlier, he was coming like a whirlwind, didn't he? And he shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. Go ahead. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day. Uh-huh. From one end of the earth, even into the other Ooh. end of the earth. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day. From one end of the earth, even unto the other. Go ahead. They shall not be lament, lamented. Uh-huh. Neither gathered, nor buried. Uh-huh. They shall be dung upon the ground. Ooh, that is really something. He said they're not going to be gathered. They're not going to be buried. They're going to be as dung upon the ground. Now let's show you what's going to happen to them. What the Lord going to do. Because he got to get rid of these bodies, right? Because he's going to clean this earth up. And he got to get rid of these dead bodies right here. Let's show you what he's going to do with them. Let's go to Revelation 19 chapter. Revelation 19. And we're going to pick it up. At verse 16. Revelation 19 and 16. Let's show you what he's going to do with these dead bodies. Revelation 19 and 16. Go ahead and read it. And he have on his vesture and on his thigh a name written. Uh -huh. King of kings, Lord of lords. Uh -huh. No, we know what we're talking about, though. Go ahead and read. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven. He said to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, go ahead. Come and gather yourselves together to the supper of the great God. Ooh, come and gather yourselves together to the great supper of the Lord your God. Because remember, we read all those bodies. They're not going to be burned. They're not going to be buried. They're not going to be gathered. What's going to happen to him? He said, come to the great supper. Come to the supper of the great God. Go ahead and read. That ye may eat the flesh of the kings. That you may eat the flesh of the kings. Go ahead. And, look. and the flesh of captains. Uh-huh. And the flesh of mighty men. Go ahead. And the flesh of horses. Uh-huh. And of them that sit on them. And the flesh of all men, both free and bond. Uh-huh. Both small and great. This is what he's going to do with those dead bodies right here. He's going to have them eaten by the fowls of the air and by the beasts of the field. It's going to be so Remember, because they're not going to be buried or gathered and buried. they just going to be, they just going to lay upon the ground. And he said, look, come and eat. Come together unto the supper of the great God that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, of them that sat on them, the flesh of all men, both free, bond, both small, and great. This is really something. We, the world ain't ready for this. Can you imagine that? Every way you look, it's a dead body. If you ain't one of these dead bodies, <clears throat> you better get on this train, people. You better get on the Lord's train and we better start following after his ways because if you don't follow after his ways, you might be one of these dead bodies. Go ahead and read. What verse you at? 19. Uh-huh. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse uh -huh. and against his army. Now they're going to try to come make war with him. But guess who's going to lose? Because he's not going to stop until he set forth judgment in the earth. Yes, sir. Now he's not going to stop until he gets victory. And he's going to subdue this man. Go ahead and read. Then the beast was taken, and with him in the and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. Uh-huh. With which he deceived them that have received the mark of the beast. Uh-huh. You better not get that mark. We, we, that's another.
another lesson, but you may not get that far. And I know now they got that computer chip out that you put in your right hand and your forehead, like the like the, almost a grain as, as small as a grain of a, 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 a rice. They got that mark out now. Now I'm not saying that this is the mark. I'm saying this technology is here. This technology is here. Go ahead and read. <clears throat> To receive the mark of the beast in them that worship his image. Uh -huh. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Go ahead. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the and horse. And the remnant was slain of him that sat upon the horse. Who, who sat upon his horse? The king of kings and the lord of lords. Jesus. Go ahead and read. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse. Uh huh. Which sword received. Proceeded out of his mouth, uh -huh. and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh, because the slain of the Lord is going to be from one end of the earth to the other, and they're not going to be gathered or buried. They're just going to lay out, and the Lord is going to call all the beasts of the, the fowls of the air, and the beasts of the fields, and come devour, come and eat. That is really something. Man. You're going to see birds and animals and stuff eating flesh off the ground. Dead people. That is really something. Let's get away from this. Let's go to Haggai 2, the second chapter. Haggai 2. But this guy right here is a man of war, ain't he? He is a man of war. He is a, the Lord of hosts. He is the Prince of Peace coming to make war. Let's go now. Let's, we're going to Haggai. And Haggai is right before uh, uh, Zechariah. Right, right between Zephaniah and Zechariah is Haggai. So we're going to Haggai 2, and we got the three more after this. Haggai 2 and 6. Haggai 2 and 6. When you get it, go ahead and read it. Well, thus said the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth. He said it's yet a little while, and I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth. Because we read that earlier, he's going to shake the heavens, didn't he? Go ahead and read. And the sea. Uh-huh. And the dry land. He's shaking everything, eh? Go ahead and read. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. Uh-huh. And I will fill this house with glory, said the Lord of hosts. Uh-huh. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, uh -huh. said the Lord of hosts. Go ahead. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former. He's talking about the house that he's going to build when he returns, that he's going to have built by Zerubbabel when he returns. Go ahead and read. Shall be greater than of the former, uh -huh. said the Lord of hosts. Uh -huh. And in this place will I give a peace, will I give peace, said the Lord of hosts. He said, and in this place will I do what? Give peace. Because after the Lord take down the nations, that's what you're going to have on this earth. Peace. Finish that. And in the four and twenty day of the night. I'm sorry. So he said the glory of this house, uh, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than of uh, the former, said the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, said the Lord of hosts. Because that's what's going to happen when the Lord returns and he take down the nations and set forth judgment in the earth. There's going to be peace after that. Because he is what? The prince of peace. He is the Prince of Peace. Let's go now. Let's go to Revelation 11 chapter. We got two more after this. Revelation 11. Remember, he said he's going to shake the heavens and the earth, didn't he? The, the dry ground and the sea. He's going to shake up everything. Revelation 11, and we're going to pick it up at verse 13. Revelation 11 and 13. Go ahead and read it. In the same hour was there a great earthquake. Uh-huh. And the tenth part of the city fell. 